Hi, I'm Knorr. Thanks for clicking on this video because it's slightly different than Blood Bowl and Don't Starve. Uh, this is the first uh, part of the first session where me, uh, Ethan, IB, Scoozle and Grunty uh, with our GM Nuggin and also featuring Eldad from time to time. Uh, this is, a, is our first session of Rogue Trader, which is a pen and paper role playing game that takes place in the Warhammer 40k universe. Which I'm not very well versed in at all, so... I'll probably be a horrible rogue trader. It's essentially us b being uh, the crew on a big ass ship going around the uh, well part of space, having adventures. Hopefully, um, I recorded this in Map Tools and I shifted some things around. I have this intro here because I really need you to give me some comments. Is this stuff you like and you want to see more of? Was it not for you? That's totally fine. I might still upload it and then you'll just know that. No, I'll just watch Don't Starve Together or I'll just watch Blood Bowl. Uh, but if you're interested, please give me some comments so I know what to improve till next time because I realize that this is a pretty unedited um, version of the session and I think it kind of needs to stay that way. But maybe there's more stuff that can be done with the video itself. Um, I recommend you don't... Focus solely on the video, but maybe have this on in the background when you're uh, doing other stuff. Uh, thanks for checking it out. Uh, I was going to say bye, 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 but I mean, this is just going to jump into the start of the session. So, uh, thanks for watching. Uh, oh, I can't say bye. Um, I'll see you in a few seconds. So, do you wanted an introduction of all the characters, Nogan? Yes. Why don't you go first, Kyle? I haven't thought of mine, though. Yeah, see, that's why you've got until everybody else is done. Exactly. Uh, yep. I can't handle this pressure. Well, you should have thought that before you most, made your character. Most of it's all like done for you already with your origin. Yeah. Yeah. You just got so a... I to say, read my origin. Good. <laughs> <No. laughs> um, you got to put a bit of flair yes. to it. So, um, so I'm playing it, John uh, Silk. Uh, well, that's a short name, Silcarnicus. Uh, noble born from a planet that doesn't really matter that much. Uh, because what's important is what's out there in the stars. Hidden galaxies, possibly? Ex hor I, mean, I mean, horrible monsters that all must die for the God Emperor. And I'm the rogue trader on this fine ship, the Silkworm. Probably the fastest tiny ship in, well, I guess around here at least. And it definitely, most positively, does not have any type of Sino advancements at all. Because that would be an affront to the God Emperor, and we don't do that on the Silkworm. Don't do that. Not That's here. That's why we have the temple room. Mm -hmm. <laughs> cupboard uh, broom closet. Slash astropath cave. Exactly. <laughs> Um, so that's pretty much me. Um, I guess what everyone knows is, yeah, I'm, I'm nobleborn. I seem to have, I claim to hate, uh, like Xenos, but clearly there's some fascination there. And I've been in some kind of horrible situation that happened on some, uh, forgotten space station at some point, And it has left me with possibly some, um, um, I'm fine. No issues at all. No issues. Smooth sailing. Also have a really nice fur, whatever it is. Yeah, uh, it's uh, whatever the hell Stole. this thing was before you killed it was. Exactly. Space some, yak. Very some nice. Some kind of silkworm. Look possibly. at it. It's a silky, a silky worm, but with a Y in it. It's like a dragon worm. I get it. Yeah. Ah, nice. I get it. So it's like the teddy bear, but silk worm. I get it. I mm. get it. It's very fancy. Ethan, why don't you go next? Uh, okay, I'm gonna be uh, Anadar Zarak, who is a Dark Eldar. Uh, he is an Eldar pirate man. He loves to do sick raids on people and get slaves and do awful things to people. Uh, but he met uh, John Silk and took a shine to the weird ape. And uh, the two became fast friends because one guy loves aliens and the other one just loves weird stuff. And uh, he's just uh, he's just a weird he's just a weird Eldar man that hangs out with the rogue trader. Nice, very nice. Uh, Scoozle, you're up. All right, uh, I'm Holt Cursed. I'm an astropath. 
normally. Uh, I took an alternate rank to be a super religious astropath. Um, I was born on a void world where I was a scavenger for the majority of my life uh, until I got picked up by the black ships. Um, while I was being tortured and whatnot by them, uh, I eventually got to meet the Emperor, which was pretty cool. And then my mind broke and now I'm super religious. Um, I'm currently working with the Ordo Xenos to make sure that Kanor doesn't do anything really bad. I don't do anything bad at all. Exactly. He's I'm never done anything there. bad in his life. The I'm system just, yeah. works. Just Perfect. Works. Then. Yeah. I'm just there to make sure that you continue to not do bad things. Uh, that's pretty much my dude. All right, Grunty. I am Merrick Graham, explorator and tech priest. Uh, I was born on a forge world and spent most of my time learning about machines and praising the all-powerful uh, and holy Omnissiah. Uh, unfortunately, when I say born, what I meant more is that I'm a really creepy amalgamation of uh, weird genetic crap and robot parts that was grown in a lab, basically. Uh, and I don't know all the details of it, but it still kind of haunts me to the day that I'm not really human. I'm sort of this... Some, some person was trying to do things that maybe they weren't super great at. And so I've been left a little, uh, we'll, we'll say, colorful as a result. Um, I feel that I have a duty to humanity to recover the old technologies, especially the stuff from the Dark Age of technology, when everything was super rad and, like, not shitty. Uh, and I have sort of an affinity for Xenos tech, which is why Kenor has brought me on board as a specialist to keep track and uh, keep his ship that does not have any Xenos tech whatsoever. Uh, in good shape. Of course. All right, uh, IB. I'm playing Icarus Kappa. Uh, he likes money, so he's Kanar's money man. Um, not much is known about his history. Mm -hmm. uh, mysterious. Mysterious past. Nice save. Nice save. Mm -hmm. oh. <laughs> <laughs> <Do I get? laughs> Thanks, Granny. Uh, so basically, he doesn't really care too much that Kanor's crazy for Xenos, as long as it actually makes money. As long as he gets paid. Yeah, pretty pretty much. He, he doesn't like to fight very much either. But basically, as long as he can keep making money, he's going to stay with Kanor. Okay. Nice. Uh... Someone, some, why don't someone tell us about the ship since we've got some special stuff going on with it here? Well, so the ship itself does, of course, not uh, actually. I don't remember all the shit that's on it, <laughs> uh, but I do. I do remember that it's um, the ship spirit itself is adventurous, yes. so it has easier to de to detect things when. We're on Endeavors, which I'm not entirely sure what that means, but I think it, it's adventurous. I think that's kind of the... They're like quests, the, I believe. Yeah, yeah whenever, it's, whenever it's basically the in-game rules for doing quests. It just structures it for you. Yeah. Whenever we're doing a thing, the ship is like, hell yeah, I love to find things and have a good time. Yeah. And it's surprisingly fast, the at least compared to all the other ships <laughs> that we've looked at. Uh, and then it has some um, has some special abilities, right? But um, I don't know where I actually see that. <laughs> uh, so it's it's Xenophilius, which means that you have to have Xenotech on it, mm -hmm. but you get a negative thirty to tech use when trying to repair it. Uh, because it's so fast, you also can't ever increase its armor. Nope. And then, uh, let's see, for your weapons, you have regular macro cannons on uh, the top, but then on the bottom you have the Xenotech shard cannon macro batteries, which are pretty strong. Uh, and then... You also have a rune caster and a micro laser defense right. grid. Right, yeah, as your other Xenotech components. 
So the rune caster basically makes us better at traveling through the warp and also can never become unpowered, which is handy. Yep, it and always tells us where to go. The micro laser defense grid it just makes our turrets really good Super at shooting good. things down. Yep, yep. So you're pretty defensible and you're pretty good at movement. Very nice. And we've got uh, Lenali guns. And the, we have the most important upgrade, murder servitors. Right, yes, we do, do have murder servitors. Yes. Uh, and a broom, I mean, t temple for the god emperor. Right. Not a broom closet. Also that observation dome. Yeah, an observation dome, so you, you, and everybody can look out at the glory of space mm -hmm. and think how good it would be if they were out there instead of stuck on this awful ship. With, with the unbelievable, mean alien. Fringed alien. He's not, he's not going to deny it. Uh, he's, he's believably mean for an Eldar, but that's just because we're better than you. <laughs> and capable of uh, much greater thoughts. Okay, Knorr, do, do, do you want to assign anyone any specific roles on the ship? Who's specifically going to be driving, or is that just going to be well, crew members, or, you know, like, first mate gunners? I don't... Do we actually have a, a, a proper pilot? I don't think we do, right? Like, no, right now, it's just... It, one of your crew is driving right now. Yeah. Uh, because I don't think any of us are actually good at piloting. Nope. Yeah, you have to. Uh, I could probably ship. try it. Probably try I'm, it. I'm smart enough to figure it out. <laughs> uh, I'd rather have you in the back counting my money. I, I, I um, can pilot at a uh, half penalty. And yeah, half, everyone can pilot at a half, and it's an agility, so I think I come out on top there, but we should the probably... The crew might end up being better. Yeah, yeah like, 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 like the crewman has 30. Mm-hmm. And I would have tw 22, and I would be the best at it, so we should probably let the regular guy yeah. do it. Uh, a pilot's actually an advanced skill, so you wouldn't be able to do it at all. Oh, wow, I wouldn't, be able, I wouldn't even be able to figure out how to turn the wheel. Yeah. Nope. <laughs> it, it's more like you just don't, don't want to touch it because it's weird human stuff. Obviously, you can figure it out. That makes uh, sense. Okay, so the crew is piloting, um, like, um, battery or... Battle stations? I guess it's kind of the same. Yeah, so basically, like, for, for gunning and stuff like that, you're not really directly ever controlling the guns. You're pretty much the person just telling the Shoot crew what space. to do. Yeah, like, where to aim, how to organize everything, right? Because mm -hmm. you have thousands upon thousands of people, like, loading all these guns and figuring out the exact calculations on where to shoot and stuff like that. Of course so. I do. That's a very so, big responsibility. Someone, yeah, someone needs to be, you know, in charge of that and... Well, that's me. I'm good at commanding stuff. Good. Good, good, good. Okay. Well, we'll worry about any other specific situations that come up as they uh, as they happen. Um, I'm going to move you guys to the other map now. <gasps> bum, 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 bum. I got to get rid of all these weird panels that are making the it. The Coronis Expanse. Yes, we are in the Coronis Expanse, which is... The untamed regions of the Imperium, out uh, outside of most laws of regular space. Hell yeah! Uh, the map here is pretty incomplete, uh, but I mean, there, there's you know thousands and millions of different planets and worlds and stars around here. But this is just the basic map that it, pretty much everyone knows about. Uh, Wow! Oh, the, the accursed Demesne. That sounds good. Okay, yeah, <laughs> the ragged worlds. The heathen stars. Oh, the heathen stars. Good. So you don't necessarily have a lot of information about any of these places, but you got you know you basically know where they are. They're on the chart, pretty much. I, I do not want to go to the planet of Corpse Fortune. <laughs> it's you so, could loot a lot of bodies. Corpse Fortune sounds like a Diablo free item. Yeah. If you if you guys can see where your ship is over on the right side there, it's at you're at Footfall right now. Yep. Uh, yeah. Footfall is basically it's not really a planet, it's not a star system or anything like that. It's actually kind of a shit ton of asteroids all chained together and uh, kept from colliding into each other, and they all have all kind of buildings and stuff on it. And it's it's basically. Uh, a major port to stop at from anyone coming back from uh, regular Imperial space. If you look on the map at the very right side, it says core word. Um, 
and there's those two giant warp storms right there, right next to Footfall, and then there's a sort of little passage through there. That's how you get back to regular Imperial space. Uh, port Wander, way over there on the edge, is like the last port in actually in Imperial space. So you guys are pretty much right here in the first safe area right inside of the Coronis Expanse. Uh, there's not a massive amount of things at this port compared to being in Imperial space, but most like, goods and whatnot that come through the area stop through here, so it's a pretty sizable amount of anything that you could be looking for at, at this time. But, uh, you guys are pretty much free to decide what you want to do at this point. Do you want to explore? Do you want to, you know, you, I mean, your major goal is probably get up your profit factor, uh, which is pretty good already. But, you know, you, know, you want to expand your empire. That's your general idea of the whole, uh, you know, mission here. Maybe we should make it as big as possible. Raptor, get some minerals. What are you even saying? He wants to get some minerals. <laughs> We're going to get some minerals from Lucian's breath. You want to get minerals? Minerals. It's a mining world. He wants to exploit some uh, you natural can, resources. You can, you can do some trading. Are you saying we'd get money from minerals? Sure we would. Seems seems a bit drab. Don't you like gold? Well, as far as minerals go, I guess it's nice because it's golden. But, I mean, it's not... Well, what do we know about this place that you were talking about? Uh, so you guys you guys are pretty much just starting out here in the Cronus Expanse so uh, you, you don't have a lot of chart information on any of these places so Lucian's Breath, Mining World that's pretty much all you, that you know at the, at the moment mm. you either have to well. ask around Footfall or you'd have to just straight up go there or go somewhere else and you ask you know what, the thing what's Kane's Abyss? because according to my map that has a special symbol on it. Ah, you don't know. <laughs> ooh, ooh, ooh. Oh, there's, gonna go there, there now. There's all these. <laughs> there's all these blank spots. Yeah, we could just go to like uh, go, we could Serpentis go to what, Minor yeah. or Major. Yeah, I mean, you 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 can actually just look for completely unknown places on the map you can go try to buy like better star charts that might have more information. You can go try to like. Buy a chart that has, uh, like, you know, lists of worlds that haven't been explored yet. There's plenty of different ways to get information here. You can just straight up try to find things with incredibly long range scanners. Your scanners aren't that great, but I mean, as if you're going around, you, who knows what you can find if you're just wandering. I kind, of, I kind of feel like I kind of feel like my ship's pretty good at finding stuff if it wants to. Mm. So I feel like we should go exploring, right? We should go exploring, shouldn't we? Yeah. Explorer. Yeah. We should do. Let's go find so some weird stuff. So what's Kane's Abyss? That's, <laughs> like, that's a question you could ask yourself. I'm just saying, no one knows, where's, apparently. Where's Kane's Abyss? It's, it's between the Cauldron and the Cenarius Malefica. Maleficum. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow. That looks... Uh... Ooh. And then after that, we could stop in on Bastion, the Forbidden World. <laughs> I think maybe not that one. What's... I don't... Like, that's Look, forbidden. For, yeah, no, nothing's forbidden for the Empire. <laughs> mm, I don't know. Please. I'm just, like... I think, yes. I think it's pretty much already decided where we're going. <laughs> Captain's orders. No, I'm just, like, I'm, I'm, I'm a people person. Like, this is our... I mean, this is my ship, but we're... <laughs> we're... On it. Yeah. <laughs> We're not going to make any true discoveries going to these places people have gone to before. He's right. He's right. Let's go to Scenarius uh, Maleficum and see what we can find. And if there's nothing exciting, let's go to Kane's Abyss. Hell yeah, let's go explore some cotton. Okay, so you just you, do you have a specific location you're trying to go well, to? Well, I mean, Cenarius we, we have a. Leficum, you know or? what? You know, my that's seneschal. just a reason of space, region of space, so. Yeah. Well, my, my Seneschal point, pointed out that we should be making money. So maybe there's someone, there's people in Footfall that actually wants to go to whatever other shitty places that are around there that have already been explored. 
Or like or maybe passengers. Yeah, maybe they've got some goods they want shipped. Yeah, because we're really fast. No, like overnight delivery, assuming we're talking about a night world where uh, night's really long. I have to say that the ingenuity of the Empire knows no bounds with the Burn Scour, which is a place where there's loads of really awful monsters and it's a death world where everyone wants to kill you. And the very next planet next to it, they set up as a cemetery world. <laughs> Just, nah, we're not shipping bodies that far. Whatever. <laughs> Incredible. So I guess actually we should probably... Uh, so I, I assume there's like a space station or something in footfall. Yeah, yes, that's, that's, that's what, yeah, what you're it is right now. Yeah. It's a it's a space station that's a ton of asteroids all all connected. So it's a pretty big. Well, place. how about how about we get off and uh, and see if what what's up? See if we can find some um, like because we're here, we have a ship. Maybe you want to go to Kane's Abyss. Maybe you got Maybe something. Maybe you want to go somewhere else close to Kane's Abyss. Maybe you want something <laughs> shipped over there. We got a big uh, cargo hold. Exactly. It's uh, it's very nice, spacious, and uh, lots of ropes tie your stuff down. Exactly. Fast very, delivery. Very, very sturdy. Like you can trust us to deliver your stuff to someone. Okay, so basically, you 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 want it to be known. You're heading this way. You're looking for any business that's going this way that you can help transport. Yep. Okay. Yeah, that's that's pretty simple. Uh, let's see. You need a, uh, I believe it's gather information check. We'll have to go back to the other map here and use your uh, characters. You can switch maps in the top right. Yeah. If you need to go back. It's the player save, right? Yep. 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 Okay. Um, so let's see. So use skill. Um, use let's skill. see. Inquiry. In inquiry. Uh, okay. You. Here we go. Completely <laughs> forgotten how to do this. It's because I don't. I, we, I, we have... I ne I, they never taught me inquiry in school. That's why you've got the Ichabod over here. Icarus or whatever. Yeah, but keep in mind, you can also always have. One of the other players do it, or you can always, always send out crew members to go do just about anything. So, if you well, think any of them would be better at it than you, for for the most part, your crew, like your crew, is you know thousands of people. So they're pretty. Yeah, there's pretty much at least a couple people trained in just about any skill that you want within your crew at any given time. Mm -hmm. So if you think they'll be better at something than you with their thirty ch percent chance, then. You can think, skip to, be, to be fair, though, I think maybe we should send out Ic uh, Icarus. I can't remember how to roll. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you you are the worst Seneschal I've had. Click buddy. on your guy. And then <laughs> token macro. Uh, no, just click on it once and then token macro frame at the top. In the campaign macro thingy. Or wherever that is. Um, so you may have window. to go to window campaign. Yeah, window, then turn on campaign. Ah, there we are. This is one of those systems where if you haven't done it once, it's super confusing. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, that's a lot of things. Yeah, and then you go down and you go on to uh, use skill and then inquiry. And then you should have like a 57. Holy shit, you're really smart for an ape. I, I don't think it's on there. Well, if you haven't, if, if you don't, What's not what? use skill? You should have used skill. Oh, okay, no. In inquiry is fellowship. Mm -hmm. the... Wow. Well, it's because you're you're chatting with people. You're asking yeah. stuff. Yeah. Now, Nuggin, mm -hmm. I, I, I think there is some sort of internet equivalent in Purinet or something. Uh, Could yeah. I use yeah, uh, tech use or literacy to see if there's like a jobs listing? Go to sure. Craigslist. Yeah. No. I can. I can. Uh, yeah. I can. I can see that working out. Uh, you know, it, it'll it'll be local for anything like that. There's not like long distance communication with a sort of internet kind of thing. That's what the astropaths right. are for. But uh, yeah, you can definitely you know like just tap into the, the internet net. of the station. Yes, of yeah. course you can do that. Yes. I mean, you can just do test versus uh, cars characteristics. And choose fellowship. Which All right, guys, I'm just sticking my weird. Uh, my if you scroll, you know you're in macros, combat, and actions. No, I don't okay, know what it is. okay. Click on your guy, mm -hmm. and do, do you have the campaign macro thing open? 
exciting stuff. Yeah. Guys, I'm on the internet. And, and at the top, there should be token macro frame, a big black button with the yellow text. Uh, yeah. Okay, click oh. that while having... There you go. And now you've got all, the, all these new wonderful weird buttons. All right. Which, Holy what shit, you're rolling? super smart, Quinte. He's and really that's smart. That's why you hired me. <laughs> that's ma that makes me super smart. And also, he's got no balls. Well... You don't need them. Oh, you win some, you lose some. Don't need them. <laughs> that fun story. I actually won a pair of balls in a dice game once. Mm. That was a long time ago. It was a long time ago. Where do you think my uh, my little appendage that I interface with things is? I had to replace Round something. One. Holy shit! <laughs> Holy shit! I, I mean, wow. just found like every business wow. that anybody has ever wanted to do. Holy shit! Wow! 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 Okay, well, nice. Icarus is really good. No, he's motivated. He's highly motivated. Uh, and that's I, good for everyone. I, for the life of me, cannot find the damn page in the book that has the Cineris Maleficum in it. Hey guys, I, they, like they the told whole... me that not to go to Kane's Abyss is a terrible place. <laughs> <laughs> they said we should go somewhere where they got lots of money and take he it. He said we should go find gold. Yeah, weird. That one's, this, this not sound. That's not what I heard. Uh, I mean, that's literally probably uh, not what I heard. I, I assume my guy just went, went around saying, like, talking to people going like, So, Cain's Abyss, here it's a cool place. Have you been? Okay. I'm looking it's, on the internet right now. It's a terrible right place. It's a terrible, <laughs> terrible place. You should not go there. <laughs> Hmm. Yeah, like I can, I can see every every other place on this damn map, and I cannot find that. I'm I'm looking for the part of the book that has the Cineris Maleficum in it. Like, there's in the back near all the GM stuff. There's descriptions of all the different places except that one. <laughs> yes. I don't see it anywhere. Well, it's truly a mystery. Uh, yeah, there's Heathen Stars, the Olden Ridges, Rifts of Hecticon. The Treacherous Eldar. <laughs> That's not me. I'm not treacherous. That uh, word is only mentioned once in the entire book, and it's on the map. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is good. We're testing, we're testing the See, skills right it's off the mysterious. bat. It's mysterious. It's true, yeah. Okay, I found a website with it that's not in English. <laughs> <laughs> well, just use your, your translate skill. Right, yeah. You need at least two degrees of success. <laughs> But I mean, this is what it's like when you're exploring new areas of the universe. Yeah. Sometimes all you find is a web page in another language. Okay, here we go. No, no, of course not. <laughs> <laughs> this Finally. one, this one, this one's in English, and I click on one of the names of like the systems in it, and it just takes me to a thing to like log in with Facebook. Brilliant. <laughs> Oh, yeah. God. That's probably secure. I think you should do it. I'm gonna go rub some sacred unguents on the warp drive. <laughs> Gross. Just get it okay, warmed up. So, so uh, here, here is what. Okay, here's some basic information about it that you guys definitely would have found out with four degrees of success talking about it, and then ridiculous amounts of tech use and everything like this too. So, the Cineris Maleficum is the name for systems clustered around the stellar nebula of Cain's Abyss and the gravity storms of the God Emperor's Scourge. The systems around the Abyss tend to be relatively young and rich in material worth due to their proximity to this wondrous phenomenon. Mm -hmm. The areas around the Scourge are periodically ravaged by their proximity to massive gravity phenomenon. All systems in this region are viewed as profitable, but because of the intense difficulty navigating to or from the system, any long-term endeavor is invariably crippled by the warp roots disappearing. So it's an in 
it, it's possibly a very profitable place to high go. High risk, high reward. But it's an incredibly high yeah. risk. Mm. Not only could is there like gravity phenomenon and uh, like warp storms and shit happening, the warp roots just straight up disappear and you might not be able to get it in or out again, you know? That so, doesn't sound very good to me. So Kanara chose a really good place for us to go. So I'm thinking um, um, the opposite. That's really, inter- that's really interesting and all that. And that's really good information. Um, and I'm glad we got that. But um, while I was out talking to people, doing my own reconnaissance, I found out about this place in the Unbeholden Reaches uh, called the Frozen Sisters. Oh. oh. Have you no faith in the Emperor's technology? We can navigate this warp storm. It's not the Emperor's technology that I doubt. It's the navigators. Mm. Flesh is weak. Exactly. It's a fair point. Flesh is weak. Frozen sisters, though. The unbeholden reaches. Beyond the larger nebula of the Coronis Expanse are regions visited only by the silent disciples of Thule and few others. Tales are told of ghost vestals, beauteous but deserted worlds, and dust nebula that claim the soul, souls of the damned and forsaken. And of course, wealth beyond measure awaiting the Ooh. courageous rogue trader who will claim it. That's it's crazy. a very, very mysterious and unexplored territory. You might say unbeholden. Yeah. yeah. Mm. How about we go there? Mm. But uh, we should probably get some cargo on the way. Like, we don't want to go anywhere and have to pay for it ourselves. Yeah, let's... I mean, I've got like a thousand crew or whatever. I think closer to 10,000. Yeah. It's a lot of people. It's, it's the same amount, really. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, like, once you get once you get up over 20, like, humans tend to blend together. Yeah, definitely agreed. One death is a strategy, a million deaths is a statistic, Captain Knorr. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, here on the Silkworm, everyone's valued the same. Who are you again? <laughs> I'm the guy pulling over the chains. He's pulling over the chains. <laughs> yeah, he's our, he's, our, he's the uh, chief chain puller. Eldad's the voice of the crew, whatever but, crew yeah, members but, around. The head of the union. I'm the voice of the crew, as in I'm the fucking dinosaur working the dishwasher that turns to the camera and goes, It's 11! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's really weird, but so, our, our uh, ship is entirely crewed by Lithuanians. <laughs> <laughs> so the Frozen Sisters, which Kenor specifically was looking for information on, mm-hmm. uh, they're actually... From what you hear around football, footfall, they are two ancient moon-sized stations constructed by some isolated factions of humanity that drift uh, in the void. You sure it's halls, humanity? That's what, this is what you're hearing. Okay, okay. Their halls are coated with an ancient water ice and condensation, concealing fragments of ancient technology and forbidden sciences. Few explorers have returned from the depths of the Frozen Sisters, and the, uh, the Adeptus Mechanicus shun the place, fearing the heathen machine spirits hidden within. Mm. I think we should go. Well, if the Seneschal wants to go. He wants to go find some weird stuff and sell it. It's true, and that's really ancient tech, so it'd sell really well. It seems like everyone's kind of on board for Frozen Sisters here. Except for possibly Grunty. We should proceed with caution, but I do not share the more conservative views of most of my order about Archaeo tech. He's radical. Hmm. That's why I hired him. Probably. Uh, Yeah, so... uh, I guess we should get the word out that we're going, or the silkworm is traveling towards the unbeholden reaches. So, Icarus, get out there and go sell our cargo uh, hold space so we can t- do some shipping. And so, find, and find out if anybody knows like any sick good treasure on the Frozen Sisters or whatever. So here's so what you guys like, should do now. Go here. 
If you're heading to the Frozen Sisters, take a look at the map here, and you should plan your route there. So if you're heading directly there from Footfall, number one, that's an incredibly long trip in the warp, as in yeah. weeks of worth of time, possibly a month or more. Yeah, I don't like to that. To get straight through there, you're passing through the Cauldron and the God Emperor's Scourge, which are not very nice things in space. So you want some sort of path around here, and you want to... No one, no one's necessarily going to want to go straight to the Frozen Sisters, but if you plan your path right, you might be able to get some, you know, drop-offs for people along the way. Yeah, so how about we, what do you guys think? How about we start out going just, well, I'm, I'm going to use, I'm sure we'll use other terms, but south to, uh... Corpse Fortune? Yeah. No, well, that sounds bad, but uh, th Domaris. Yeah, I think, like, going down that way. And then we, we're kind of skirting the cauldron with that yeah. one, though. That's going to make it more difficult. Well, I mean... But but then this way, if we go all the way down to, like, Grace and the Foundling Worlds, I'm sure there's loads of people who want to go there and do oh, things yeah. there. Yeah, I'm just saying, like, we need, to, we need to kind of trade off, decide between avoiding the cauldron by going to Corpse Fortune, but having another jump. Or going I, from I, Footfall I, to Dumber straight through the cauldron. I guess we could go to Corpus Fortune and down to Grace and then go rain uh, Magros Repton 4 to Frozen Sisters. Yes. And then we can then we uh, we're not going straight through the cauldron. Yeah, like yeah, football. What's actually up with Cor Corpus Fortune because it sounds it's just it's a dead world which just means nothing that there. there's no human presence on it. I don't know if it means yep. there's nothing on it. But there's no, definitely no Imperial presence. Hmm. It sucks. Yeah, sounds bad. I mean, it's right next to a really big warp storm, so um, bad things happen there regularly. Well, I assume we kind of have to navigate on, since this is the star chart we have. Like, when we are navigating, we're navigating between these different points. Yeah. Yep. It's not like we're like, okay, let's skirt the needle between the cauldron and the uh, warp storm. Yeah, and we then, would need more, yeah. more better maps to do that. So, right. Footfall, Corp Fortune, Dumb, Grace, or, or Damaris, Damaris, False Hope, Grace, Rain. So the way warp travel works is you go into the warp and every everything looks completely different. The only person that can actually see out into the warp is your navigator, uh, and. It, it, we, you, know, you guys don't actually red. have a specific navigator, do you? No, we no. got another guy. Uh, yeah, there's, there's, a, there's, a your, your crew. There, there's a picture here of uh, what the navigator sees when he looks at the map. So it, it's different for every navigator. They all yeah. see it differently. But, uh, but like, look at this thing. You'd be like, oh, okay. I, I click. Yeah. That's what, some, what like some navigators will see when... They look at the map and they're like, oh, yeah, no, look, look at this shit. Oh, so and it looks each... like a, what you call it? Uh, what's that one painter Starry guy? Starry Night. Starry Night, yeah. The painting. Mm -hmm. uh, but each navigator sees the warp differently. Some actually kind of see the raw warp. Some see, uh, you know, the, it looks like a, a stormy sea to them. Some of them see it like they're driving a vehicle over land. Some see it like they're flying through clouds. It's all—it's completely different to every single one that's going through it. It's just however their mind processes it. No, I hate them. But planets and stuff leave a big shadow in the warp, so they're easy to go to. They can find them pretty simply. Uh, other than that, you know, they have no idea what this sort of thing that they're interpreting around them in the warp is actually going to be. So you could theoretically drive blind into the warp. You just have no idea where you're going to come out. You know what? Let's not do that. Yeah, let's go like planet let's to go planet. planet. Let's go planet hopping. Let's, uh... I don't understand why me drawing a line makes this weird ragged cut in space because time. Because you're not drawing a line, you're drawing a shape and then you're filling it in. Yeah. Well, oh, yeah, I select gotta... to draw a line now. Straight line. Like, someone else try it. See what happens. Draw a straight line. I can just draw lines like this. Yeah, see? What it does, it... it it's, um... I don't know, it's... Yeah, let's see. Like, I'm drawing Someone's like drawing straight lines. Yeah, me. 
I used what a straight line. I just went to the yeah. drawing tool and then uh -huh. draw straight, straight lines. lines. Weird. I wonder why yeah, mine. There we go. Whoa. Oof. Well, now it works. Yeah. So. Who's the actual I... tech priest in here? So we're going like this. Uh. I assume. I'm I'm the red. Yeah, that, yeah seems, that, looks... that seems all right to me. And then that's plenty of stops for anybody who might want to. And if you want to go like blow up some knights in armor, yeah, we can and land if someone on. Someone has like some some shitty waste they want to get rid of. We can dump it on Corpse Fortune. I'll be fine. Or nice. Space. Yeah. So if anybody wants any business done at any of these things. Yeah, I and I think so. like more like I think I think we can get to Damaris pretty darn quickly. Compared to many other ships, because we're fast. We can hang out well? on uh, Ritamaron for a while and act like gods with all of our super awesome technology. Since that's just a feudal world. Yeah, I I, I just figured we'd just uh, bring down the periscope and look at him and giggle. <laughs> Space that's periscope. And, and that's why uh, he's my friend. Maybe abduct a few. <laughs> I've found like the opposite of business there. Yeah, no business. No business on the feudal world. Got it. Get going, internet guy. There's Nobody's some, got some... any corpses to dump. <laughs> Weird. Normally, Nobody, nobody's gone. Up. No one's gone. I've got all these dead bodies that you're getting rid of. Everyone's doing it in secret. Ugh. It's even the point. Yeah. Humanity's weird. Well, I, hmm. I've seen weirder, comparatively, I mean. Normally, in the Mechanicus, we just sort of graft a bunch of robot parts onto them and then uh, make them do things. Make them go. Like Frederick here, my servo skull. Say hello, Frederick. Uh, is he, is he Frederick boop. or is he Friedrich? Boop, beep, boop. He looks oh. like he's in pain. No, he's no, smiling. that's just the aspects. He's smiling. <laughs> Looks like he's in constant pain. No. Like servitude is weighing him down and the... Uh, he flies, how could it be weighing him down? <laughs> it does not compute, idiot. I polish his skull every day to please the stream spirit, it's fine. Well, internet guy, maybe you should look up some business, because this guy... Jeffed it. I refuse yeah. to believe there is no business involved in like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight worlds. I'll, yeah. uh, no, no business. I'll take a look. See if anyone's posted on uh, Craig Akist's list. <laughs> and if that fails, I can check my email. Come on, you skill. There we go. It's very exciting. One degree of success. That was fucking You're actually out. Not great, but better than five degrees of failure. <laughs> pretty good. I, I, I'm pretty sure, like five degrees of failure means that IB first found a really good job, but then and someone then was fucked like, it up. Well, I'm. You are not. He, he found he found a really really good job that someone had taken like two hours ago. Yeah. He <sighs> already accepted it. Yeah. Gift it. But Grunty has found uh he's he's found a small uh sort of trade route that you guys can drop some stuff off on. Damaris uh needs some uh you you know, you're you're gonna be re resupplying their agricultural uh base there. Uh then down in Grace you're dropping off some uh you know, you're basically just moving some food and basic supplies down to all these worlds mm -hmm. straight from Footfall as you're passing through everything. Cool. It's Seems not gonna get enough. you not gonna get you guys, you know, a lot of stuff, a lot of money or anything like that, but it's on your way and uh it's useful. Now remind me again, money's the um So it, it's your profit factor. That's pretty and much that's, it. Let's we we use that for um acquisitions. Yeah, you use it for anything. And Your bartering. profit factor is currently forty-nine, so uh, that, that's pretty pretty damn high. 
Um, basically, uh, this this little uh, resupply trip that you're taking right now isn't going to be enough to increase your profit factor at all, but it will cover pretty much all your expenses for making this trip. So you don't Heck have to worry yeah. about losing anything. You don't have to worry about maintenance or anything like that. That'll cover all your money as long as you successfully drop off all the stuff here. Perfect. Nice. Breaking even. So we'll we'll set up this as an endeavor here. So you're making a little trade run, and what's your goal with the Frozen Sisters? You're going to explore them? Or are you trying to plunder them? What's what's the end goal here? Uh, I think the end goal is to. Well, the end goal is to plunder, isn't it? Really? Yeah. Like well, I was gonna I was I gonna be all noble and say explore. Plunders are, are very. But that's the really the case. We just yeah. go over there and find the cool shit and take it with us. We're reclaiming. Yeah, we're lost reclaiming technology. lost technology. Reclaiming lost technology. Okay. Is, is there great. anybody that like knows where he is or has heard like any sick legends of weird stuff? Or, like maybe they've got a treasure map and it's like, oh, on the third floor of the Frozen Sisters, there's a space heater or something. You know, here here in Footfall, all you're hearing is like, well, yeah, this is a thing I heard about way, way off on the complete other side of the yeah. sector, you know? Yeah. So I think that's something we should try and do while going to Frozen Sisters. Yeah, yeah, I guess as we... So get... it's an explore... If, if we don't find any more concrete information on the way down, it's an exploratory mission. I guess. Looking for... to reclaim lost technology. Mm-hmm. Not plundering. And no, we're definitely plundering, not, plundering nope. implies we're taking it from someone. No plundering, no pillaging. No burning. Minimal burning. But we have these murder servitors. They're to stop us getting murdered. Yeah, through In counter space. murder servitors. Though, if things go weird and bad on the thing, we can probably... Just turn <laughs> them loose. Yeah. Let them have a little fresh air. They like that. Okay, so uh, is, is there anything else you want to do in football before you guys set off? Any um, acquisitions we... you want to try to go? And any um, other information you need? Anything at all? Because okay. you're heading out into the warp from here. Yeah, so. I don't. I don't remember the cool stuff you can get. <laughs> uh, well, um, I mean, you can try to get just about anything. So do we have yeah, like but... plenty of ammo for all our guns and stuff? Because yeah, it would suck to get out really there. Good, because I don't want to get out there and have a empty gun. Uh, before we leave, I'm gonna go check with the astropathic choir and make sure we don't have any messages. Um. Okay. As far as I know, I don't have to roll for that. No, you don't have to roll for that. That you know, they just get all their stuff and keep it for you until you're ready. Uh, <laughs> Basically, all you're getting is the general weather report for the area of the system. The cauldron's pretty quiet today. Uh, you know, the the maw, which is these two big warp storms back into Imperial space, has flared up a little bit, but it shouldn't hurt anything you're doing. You're not going through there. Other than that, okay. no big deal. Seems all good to go, then. Sweet. Okay. Let's head out. Well... You have an NPC navigator. Yep. Yep. Mm-hmm. It's going to go good for us, I bet. Also, I'm really good at pointing. I'm like, go to space, and then I point. Forward. <laughs> that away. Onward <laughs> to space and beyond. Okay, so uh, your first destination is Corpse Fortune. Yep. Lovely vacation planet. All right. Well, let's see here. We got a we got a couple rolls to make for your navigator. Um, use skill. Um. Oh, and these are all the bonus from our uh, dope ass ship. Right. Yeah. Right. Your ship gets uh what, plus twenty. Plus isn't twenty. It? Yeah. Yep. Yep. And half time when traveling through the warp. Right. So fucking fast, you guys. So fast. So here, let me just open the dice box. I, I think I spend most of my time on the ship just standing next to the captain with my arms crossed, looking stern. All right, 1D, 100. And plus 20. Ooh. I like it when there's a plus 20. 
Okay, so that's that's for your actual na- that's for navigation warp tests for driving the ship. But this one is just the your guy's navigation warp test to uh, see if he knows how long it's going to take. Uh, air and body of roll. Of course there is. Oh, that's why. That's actually a success because he rolled an eight. Yeah. And, yeah. Yeah. So I don't know why it's failure. Um, I guess that's the way the target number there works. It wants it wants the opposite of it. I guess. Okay. Either way. Anyway, uh, he thinks it would normally take about four days in the warp to get over to uh, over to there. But uh, your ship's only going to take two days. <sighs> yeah. Because you guys half your times for warp travel. So that's nice. real, real fast. Uh, next, he has to find the Astronomicon, which is a plus 10 awareness test. Roll. So under 30 is a success. Or under 40 is a success. Yes, he knows where the Astronomicon is, so no Wait. problem there. That's a that's a big success too. Yes, I this I, I love this guy. I'm I'm glad he's on my. Do you want to do you want to name your NPC navigator? Yes. So actually, he thinks he knows how to get there so fast. It's only going to take you one day. <laughs> <laughs> really good. Okay, he's charting his course well through known warp storms. That's why he's going to get it. I'm going to... Uh, well, he didn't do very well, uh -oh. though. Uh, it's going to be a bumpy ride. It's going to be a bumpy ride. And if he gets us there in a day, then we'll roll for his name on the chart. Yes. You know what? This is actually doing this wrong. That should be a, that should only be a 60, and that first roll there should have been a 7. This is The modifier oh. should be negative here. I wonder if this will work if I do it like that. Yes, minus 20. 56, though. Not very good. No. For That's that's for actually steering the ship. So. <laughs> he, he's, he's really good at the calculation. Eldad's going to have to pull on the chains really hard. Really hard, yeah. 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 We're just going to end up in the middle of the cauldron. It'll be, fi it'll be fine. We, it's one day, guys. Well, it's one day. It's one day. Then we're done. I hate the warp. Other people have to suffer through this for four days. We only one. All right. Where's the navigation chart? What does what does failure do in the? Is it just we take longer than he thought? <laughs> so he's like, you can do well, you, we can do this in two days. No, oh, one if day. you fail your test, you're thrown off course. Oh, okay. I see how it works. It's if he rolls a nine in either of the numbers, or if he fails the test, you're thrown off course. <laughs> Dang. What? Yeah. That's. Okay. I so don't like that at all. You don't even know where. Well, it'll be fine. It'll probably be closer. So he was trying to get there so fast that he just he overshot. Went way, way wild. Didn't all take right, the left so Albuquerque. We're gonna we're gonna need some encounters here in the warp. Let's find out what happens. Nice. Hope something Demons. good. The answer I, is I hope nothing good has ever happened in the warp. Hmm. And they're both two numbers well, in the middle. That can't be too bad, right? Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Uh, okay. Let's see. <laughs> uh, okay. So here's what happens. You go. You set out from Footfall and head into the warp. Your Geller field is working fine. Everything seems completely normal. One day passes. You're not there. You're wondering what the hell is going on. You wake up the next day uh, to find yourself talking to ghosts of dead friends, dead loved ones, people you've known in the past. They're just casually chatting with you. They don't uh, leave you alone. They follow you around the ship the entire day. Uh, I killed you for a reason, <laughs> damn it! <laughs> oh, so same! I'm just being haunted by toasters. 
I I I know that these are mere apparitions, and they can't really be the ghosts of any of those things. I know what happens when you die. Uh, I think you guys should probably make a test to uh, see if you gain insanity points from this. Uh, yeah, that's probably a good idea. W- huh? Would that be a willpower roll? Uh, I'm I'm looking up insanity right now. I believe it's willpower. Don't worry. I'm already perfectly sane. <laughs> I'm just like, I, these aren't real. I'm having a good time talking to other astropaths that were sacrificed to the god emperor. I know I know when a ghost would be real, and none of these are real. I don't care. There's a lot of those, by the way. I know there is. It's like yeah, 1% make it I'm through. Just, just letting everyone ah, else we know. Insanity. We kind of just chuck them in the old emperor emperor forge to keep them going. Insanity rolled, you say? I desperately tried to remove the red thing I wrote on the player save side, but uh, I fucked it up because I can't remember how to do it now. You can use Control Z to undo. Yeah. Okay, so make a willpower test. Yeah, it's willpower. Uh, that's that's test versus characteristic, right? Yes. Yeah. W, w, WP. Holy. Everyone's I, I, fine. I can't, no. I can't believe I was the only person who failed. Well, <laughs> maybe your belief in the God Emperor isn't strong enough. And I, and I didn't have to roll because this should, like, no. This is nothing to me. Wow. I'm a weird okay. alien who's seen much worse than dead people. So, uh, yeah, if you failed, just one insanity point. Okay, it's not too bad. Here's the problem, though. The next day, the ghosts are gone, but the ship starts being rocked all over the place by an intense warp storm. It seems like the cauldron is flared up, and your navigator was trying to cut close to it to get you there incredibly fast. (sighs) This, this is freaking guy. I'm so I'm so glad I I paid for the reinforced uh, the iron beams inside <laughs> the ship or whatever. But this Good this is this is a too too bumpy a ride yet to be named navigator. Uh, the, the ship's actually incredibly intense, and uh, the the storm is actually incredibly intense. It's knocking. Also- the, well, yes. Uh, it's knocking you guys about like crazy. Uh, so the navigator thinks the best thing to do is just take you guys out of the warp wherever the heck you are right now. Can we just put on seatbelts? If if we all pile into the temple, it'll be it'll be a tight fit. <laughs> no, I can move. All, 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 all ten thousand of us. All right. We, well. Well, we're we, not talking about the plebs here. Like, we could we could do seatbelts, but I don't want to be tied to any bits of the ship as it, it gets expelled into the warp. So, and I I kind of I I just want to point out that I run this ship that the way uh, Agatha Christie novels ran their mysteries, in that even if there's a bunch of people around, like it's o- it's only the rich uh, and or named that matter, like it's never yeah, the butler. It's never the butler because he's just the butler. Mm-hmm. Not even a person. When we explode, I'm going to give this guy a name, just so... We know who to blame? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, the, the warp is not my specialty, so I say we go with the person's advice. Yeah. It's... The warp isn't my specialty, but I hate it, so I went out. The, well, it's I can too... tell you that the machine sh- the machine spirit of the ship is not happy with being like really shook up like this. I guess, we le- I guess we're leaving the warp, then. Do not shake the baby. Okay. Let's see how, how well he makes his perception test to uh, leave the work. Fine. Just fine. Okay. Ooh. Well, it doesn't mean we're not going to appear right inside the star. Like, don't get a... <laughs> don't relax yet. I'd rather be burnt up in a sun than... Okay. I added a uh, little spot on the map for where oh, you guys are. No. Uh, spot on the map? No, I love maps. Ah. Unknown. Yeah. Oh, it's a so right on the edge. Come, mate for a planet. You come out of the, of the warp right on the edge of the cauldron. Uh, there's a, a like brown dwarf, mostly dead star here. 
and a massive rocky planet orbiting it. Uh, you guys are out on the outer edge of the system. This is what your uh, your sensors are telling you right now. But in the distance, the cauldron uh, is like it's it's strong enough right now. You can see it flaring up like in normal space, which is pretty damn bad. So it looks like you're probably not going to want to leave for a while. The ship hasn't taken any damage or anything, but you have lost two days uh, in warp travel, and in real time, it's been about two weeks. Ugh. Ugh. Okay, all hands on scanners. Let's scan this sucker and see what we can find. Let's make the best of a bad situation. Okay, uh, well... Is one of you going to try to scan this, or are you just having a NPC? Uh, it depends. Gonna... What do you actually use to scan? Yeah. Uh, your ship has, yeah, detection skill. The ship oh. has detection skill? So the ship rolls? Uh, well, if someone has to, let's see. Uh, I believe the ship's detection simply modifies your role for scanning planets and stuff like this. Uh, I, you know, it's a tech use. It's a tech use modified by your ship's detection. Okay. Uh, what's the ship's detection? 10. So, and um, I'll handle this. Yeah, I think it's. That's Merrick's. Uh, well, yeah, this planet's fucked up. There's nothing there. So, <laughs> basically, uh, the, the warp storm is so strong right now, your sensors are doing basically nothing. It's a very rocky world. Uh, who knows what sort of minerals it has on it? You can't see any sort of life, anything like that. If there was, this planet's been dead for a long time. Who knows what's on it, inside it, but you got basically no information here. Too much interference, Captain. We might have to send down a party. Hmm. Yeah, we, we can't send, leave. Uh, right I can now. send yeah, Frederick yeah. down. All right, so that's a valid point. We can't leave. Yeah, I mean, we, we got nothing better. Well. Uh, uh, the, like, the only other thing we could do is just start flying into space without going into the warp, and it would take us forever to reach anywhere anyway. Well, I mean, it's it's either that or me and Anodar keeps uh, have another game of human chess. <laughs> yeah, like there's not but, much like, room because of all the yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But I'm thinking, like, if it's still if if the ship's still kind of shaky, then the observation dome, it like if a rook falls over, then like everything's lost. Yeah, like, that happened last time. It was really annoying because I'm pretty sure I had his king, but. <laughs> And then just death is nothing for the elder. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Fine. Fine. Let's let's go check it out. Let's go have a look at some rocks. Okay. Are you guys going down yourself? Or are you sending an away team? What are you doing? So you send down a team first to make sure that you did like there's not monsters that instantly murder you as soon as you land. The canary team. Yeah. I'll uh, send Frederick down the canaries. Down. I'll, I'll send Frederick down with them. So we have a viable source. I, I, let's let's use the technical terms. Uh, this is, after all, a professional space uh, uh, flight vessel. Uh, send down the red shirts. The red shirts. We have okay. uh, we have a similar thing in the cabals. On send. the, uh, I'm pretty sure the actual boarding ship. It's called the Canary, right? Yeah. That's how it works. Kinor, why don't you make a command roll to assemble a team and send them down? And, Hell yeah. Uh, yeah. That's what he's good at, you know? Yeah. Uh, let's see. That's the one. Give a little uh, speech. What exactly are you telling them to do? Well, I'm telling them that thanks to... <laughs> Seems like space is rocky today, men. And when space is rocky, we need to prove to ourselves and the God Emperor that humanity is not. We're stuck for the time being in a world we don't know what's on it yet. We will soon. We're sending down a boarding party and you have a chance to be in it. I'm only taking the bravest men and women that have proved to themselves and me they can deal with hostile work environments. Um, and also, uh, you need to not be on an actual station duty right now, so if you're in piloting or on gun control or, uh, cleanup crew, well, actually, then canteen's also off, uh, right now. But everyone else, if you're available, I want you, uh, to come and sign up, uh, your 
before the masters know who to talk to. Glory awaits. What the other star said. Uh, it I... is weird voice. Exactly. Uh, I can't remember. I think I have the freaking. I don't know if it actually does anything, but I have the. Um, um, I think I have like the come on, a bunch of people ability or something. Air yeah. Authority. Air Authority. Air Authority. Yeah. Yes. Yep. Yep. Uh, but it's just a command roll, right? Yep. Okay. But it gives you a, some kind of bonus. Okay, I'm just gonna roll the normal command and we'll see what happens. Ooh. Ooh. Is well, it? Th is anybody coming forth? <laughs> uh, well, yeah, people are coming forth. But what happens is, let's. Uh... Your, your crew lose three morale for being stuck here at this planet and having taken so long in the warp. So let's mark that on the ship. Yeah. But it was going to take four days. For I, think, I, think we need, I think we need to roll on the naming chart because I need someone to blame. Yeah, we need to... <laughs> like, if he hadn't told everybody how fast we were going to be... Yeah. Wait, what's the friggin' chart? It's a D100. Okay, I'll roll, I'll roll a friggin' D100. Find out this guy's name. Oh, 69. Uh, 69 is... Sigmund. 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 That's your navigator? Sigmund. Yeah. Sigmund will pay for this. This embarrassment. Yep. Okay. Uh, well, you send an away team down. Like I uh, said, I'm sending Frederick with them. He's got the aspect, so he's good at this kind of stuff. Oh, okay. Uh, where'd he go? Oh, he's up there. He moved him. Yeah, I put him next to the crew. Okay. Um. Okay. Are you just are you watching him? Do you have any way to like monitor him? Or are you just uh? We have uh, we have Vox, microfeed okay. stuff. I I mean I, he's got uh, and he's. I imagine like, he just like transmits the signal and he's through radio. And he's right. recording stuff as he goes or whatever. Yeah. Okay. Well, you see... Uh, we, you, you get a report from the crew. They've successfully landed. Uh, you have Frederick scanning everything down there for them. Mm -hmm. uh, he's located what appears to be some, you know, man-made mechanical structure. Uh, not, not far from where they landed. Uh, the crew approaches it, uh, and they find that it's a giant old mining drill, which was drilling into the side of this mountain here. There's a big cave entrance uh, in it. Uh, you see no signs of any people or anything like that. The surface of the world is uh, completely hostile. They have to wear their void suits. Um, but there were people here at some point. They were doing something, but... You know, it, it looks like they were trying to exploit some sort of resources on this world, but there's no sign of them whatsoever right now. Can we take the drill? Uh, it's very big. They couldn't put in the shuttle. I mean, this is a building-sized drill. In like back of 288. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's huge. Hmm. I'm worried about actually going in the little cave thing. I think there might be bad stuff in there. Well, that's why we sent. Yeah, that's, that's why we sent them down. That's why we sent the canary. We don't want, we don't want them to die because then the crew will hear about it and they'll lose even more morale. You know what they're like. No, they just if the truly brave had gone. I mean, they they came forward saying, "Yeah, I can go down. I've got nothing better to do. It's my night off." You're gonna get everyone killed, aren't you? But a note for the future, definitely don't say we're ever stuck anywhere. Say that we've found an opportunity. But that's what happens when you get stuck in places. No, you, yeah, but they don't know that. That's why they're chain pullers. Yep. No, I don't know. I don't know. I feel like you're underestimating them. Mm. You'll... Mm. I, I advise John caution. Frederick is fearless. 
Frederick okay, no so <laughs> are, they basi- are they basically are they waiting to? Yeah, they're they're waiting for orders. If they go into this cave, they're going to lose Vox Communications. Well, can't they go like in a line so they can daisy chain out to one guy standing outside? That definitely won't end badly. <laughs> but I mean, what? So so let's see. The worst that could happen is that there's some kind of monstrous beast inside this cave that can breed and survive in this hostile environment. Yeah. Like orcs. Yeah, ghosts. Yeah, uh, ghosts. And the second worst case scenario is that there's like nothing in there and it's empty. And best case scenario is it's full of cool treasures. Yeah, but if it's full of cool treasures, then Somebody would whoever was here it. first... Yeah, exactly. Now, well, I'm just saying, wherever... Maybe they so... stockpiled all their stuff in the cave and then left, and then we're going to come and get it back. But the warp's weird, and their ship's not as good as ours. There Were there were, were there other structures here as well? Like, uh, they, they it, found it, this big drill and yeah, the cave. Yeah, they found a big drill in the cave. Um, there's some small vehicles. Uh, it looks like, you know, there was a bit of a road here but it's mostly broken down right now you know this is this is old 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 stuff it's rusted away it's been scoured clean either by warp storms or by when this star was much brighter mm. captain i have a suggestion if uh the eldar would like to accompany down to the surface i would like to personally inspect this drilling apparatus it is also possible that i can enter face with its system and use it to boost our Vox communications. With a local antenna like that, perhaps we won't lose communication with anyone that moves into the caverns. Hmm. Sure. I like this, plan. this is the best plan I've heard so far. Go ahead. I'll I'll be in the pantry um, or I'll, I'll be in the galley kitchen getting another cup of tea. Meaning I'm going to go have some tea and then we'll be right back. I'm going to go put on my... Uh, I figured out how to solve the problem with the spiky clothes. And the void suit. You put the void suit on first, and then the spiky clothes. Yeah. Smart. There you go. 